What's up everyone? Sean Count Blagrath. Here today doing a video. I uh I couldn't not make a video about this. Um I'm not gonna monetize this video or anything like that or plug my shit. So it's not about that. It's about remembering Martin Stricker, aka Martin Eric Aiden of Hellhammer and Celtic Frost. Um, I don't know if I'm going to edit this video. Because this is like probably the first musician's death that really like has affected me um, deeply. Um, fuck, where do I begin? Today when I found out, uh, I didn't find out actually, I'm going to tell kind of an ironic story, so to speak. Um, I had to film for a movie today and I overslept. My friend called me, woke me up, ran into the shower and got dressed. The shirt I grabbed for the movie is my morbid tails long sleeve. After I got dressed and waited for my friend to swing by, looked at my phone and I had a bunch of people tag me on Facebook saying, that Martin passed away, so I find it strange that out of my hundred t-shirts, the one I pick is Celtic Frost. Um, what can I say about the man? Um, I'm not going to speak about personality or anything like that because I never knew him. Um, I'm going to speak about the music that he left behind and goddamn what a legacy. He, uh, him and Tom G. Warrior are essentially responsible, for how I see it, for death and black metal single-handedly. I feel like they had a massive fucking hand in creating those two genres. You can't underestimate, you can't overstate, I should say, the importance of Hellhammer and Celtic Frost upon the world of extreme music. I feel like it would be complete bullshit to try to say otherwise. The, the two together were just fucking geniuses. <sighs> Starting off with the early days, Hellhammer is the Demon Entrails compilation. Martin didn't come into the Satanic Rites, and I feel like Satanic Rites is when Hellhammer kind of came into their own. Triumph of Death and Death Fiend, which is was unreleased until this, I believe. I think there's bootlegs or shit, but there's never a real, like, I forgot the story. I have the book that him and Tom wrote, uh, Only Death is Real. Bottom line is uh, Satanic Rites was when Hellhammer quit being just kind of like a pretty basic, primitive metal band and starting to evolve into what we knew them for. And of course, Apocalyptic Raids. Uh, you can definitely tell when Martin stepped in because Martin had a huge hand in the themes of the music and it took it from being this sort of childish as uh, Tom Warrior put it uh, pubescent teen angst um, and transformed it into something true and original and taking it from being about Satan and trying to scare people and being as extreme as possible to try and write the best music as possible without relying on cliches, which is where the genius of Morbid Tales lie. And Martin had a huge part in a lot of the themes of this. Um, plus, not to mention his bass work on here is just absolutely fucking fantastic. Same thing with uh, Apocalyptic Raids, one of the most massive sounding bass tones in metal in my opinion um to Megatherion most people's favorite not mine I do know that Martin does not perform on this record and I remember in the A Dying God documentary um he said that that was his biggest regret is he was not on this record but he did write all, all the bass lines and he did write a lot of the songs with Tom. Um, I know Circle of the Tyrants 
and shit like that. I can't remember the specifics because I'm not looking at the booklet right now to tell you, but I know he had a huge hand in the writing of this and thematically. And even more so when they went avant-garde, and I feel like this is such a underrated and overlooked album into the pandemonium, the fucking mesmerized inner sanctum, Babylon Fowl. He just had a thunderous bass tone. He was lyrically an absolute fucking genius, a poet in many ways. Um, between him and Tom with their work on lyrics and uh, the themes of the music and where they wanted to go, uh, Martin was definitely able to take Tom's vision and kind of focus it in a little bit more while incorporating some of the interests of Martin. Vanity Nemesis, um, Vanity Nemesis, yeah, Nemesis, I can't remember, fucking Nemesis. Um, fucking amazing, uh, I wouldn't say it's amazing, solid groove metal record. His bass tone, once again, is fantastic. And unfortunately, after this album, he quit music um, after the breakup, which is unfortunate. Uh, I don't want to get into the uh, drama and show like that with it, but this is the album. As I stated recently when I talked about this, uh, just before I filmed this video, I made a post on uh, my Facebook. Um, Zayo was my entry, like my entry into like extreme music. So Zayo opened the door and Celtic Frost grabbed me by the throat and dragged me in. And they did so with Monotheist. This album is my favorite album of all time. Um, I'll say how much of a fan I am of this. Um, when I do my sleeve, the final piece, and this is all going to be Hellhammer, Celtic Frost, and Trypticon theme for this arm. The final piece is going to be the monotheist face on the hand. And uh, this album changed my fucking life, guys. I can't be in distress that enough. I remember so clearly watching Headbangers Ball Saturday night at 10 o'clock on MTV2 in 2006 when I was 15 years old and seeing the commercial. There's a split commercial that Century Media did where it was For Now Diabolical by Satyricon. I was already a fan of them and I thought it sounded cool, but it was nothing that made me go, oh, holy shit. And the clip they played was uh, the song King. And then the second half, Celtic Frost for Monotheist. And I remember so clearly hearing the, oh God, dun, 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 dun. Why have you forsaken me? And when I heard that, I nearly had a heart attack. It was something that just blew my mind. I was already into Dark Throne and Burzum and Mayhem. I was already into Cannibal Corpse and Behemoth and shit like that at the time. But I wasn't familiar with Celtic Frost music. And the moment I heard that clip, my mind was blown. I ran to our old desktop computer with Windows 98 and dial up and I looked up everything I could find until midnight about that album. Reviews, interviews, shit like that. It just was so fascinating to me. And since I had dial up, I couldn't just look up on YouTube or anything and listen to any music. So I was just left with just hearing that clip in my head with those lyrics and that massive bass tone that like just churns through those tom hits. And that special feeling I got, even the picture of the band they used is the one with the winter forest and them standing, you know, with the trees and shit. And I thought this band has got to be the coolest fucking band in the world. The following week, on Headbangers Ball, they played the video for A Dying God Coming Into Human Flesh. And as anybody that knows Celtic Frost knows, that's a song that Martin actually did vocals for. And that song and video combo 
scared the shit out of me, but I was so intrigued and fascinated with it. I knew I had to get monotheist, and I remember it so clearly. My parents had to go to the mall, to Sears, to pick up something. And being 15, not working, not doing shit, you know, just high school or whatever. I think middle school at that time, maybe, maybe high school, I can't remember specifically. I think I was a freshman. No job or anything like that. Um, so, I asked them if I could borrow some money to buy a CD at FYE, and after being a suck ass, <laughs> they let me, and, uh, I bought Monotheist, and uh, I remember so clearly that Sunday picking that CD up and being so pissed that my Walkman CD player didn't work anymore. So I had to read through the booklet, and it like terrified me reading all the shit and seeing the. Uh, where is it? It's inside the gatefold. Seeing the. The goat with a 777 and just looking through and just being like holy shit what did I just buy we came home and they were calling for a storm all day that day and my parents had to go to a wedding and I wasn't invited because why would you invite your own cousin to a wedding and as they left I took the CD and I went out in the living room and put it into my dad's stereo and I turned it up and the moment the feedback on Progeny hit and the boom, down, 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 that first rip, it was over. That huge clunking bass tone over these just obnoxiously heavy riffs and just driving drums. And then how it just breaks off into the doomy, if I'm yo, chilling. And as the album went, it was just hit after hit over my fucking bowl cut Christian raised 15 year old ass and I'm just thinking to myself this is unbelievable I don't fully get what's happening but this is amazing I'd never heard anything that dark that sinister it was like I was being dragged through a pit of despair and once when you get through that pit you're just dragged straight into the depths of hell and that's when I remember Ain Elohim, that song was just like, holy shit. But then, <laughs> the triptych hits with Toten God. Now, there, as I said, they were calling for a storm that day, and I remember clouds coming in, and uh, any natural light that was coming through the window was just gone. It was borderline black outside. And the rain started to come down. And as this happened, Toten got was blaring through the speakers. And I just stood there frozen, thinking to myself, this is the most evil thing I've ever heard in my life. And I questioned if I should turn it off. And, uh, I didn't. The moment I heard the kind of rumbling in Synagogue of Satana and the build-up and just that massive riff in Tom's tyrannical vocals, I was hooked and the fucking chorus scared me of in darkness thou shalt come unto me, in darkness thou shalt worship me, in darkness thou art mine eternally. And I remembered that feeling when those Tom hits fucking hit and you hear Martin's bass just being beaten. I couldn't even begin to like fathom what was happening. And then the prayer happened and right as the prayer ends and it goes into the slow riff on its own, there's the bow down before my Lord below part. And the fucking rain just came down harder and harder and as that song played out and it went to the final part of the triptych winter the outro i stood there in my living room frozen i walked over to the cd player took it out put it back in the jewel case walked to my room put it on my shelf with like 20 other cds 
put it in there, walked out in the living room, and sat in the couch for 20 minutes. Just recapping everything that happened in that album and debating with myself if I should listen to it again. And of course, I decided to. And I'm glad I did because that is my favorite album of all time. Celtic Frost, Monotheist. It has been for well over eight, almost nine years. Um, and it forever will be. This album took me to a place I didn't know existed within music. And, of course, a huge thanks goes to Tom, and that's why he's my favorite musician. But also part of that thank you goes to Martin for making me not just listen to music, but truly experience it. And that's my story, I guess. I wanted to share that story with you guys about Monotheist and how it pretty much reshaped my entire being. Um, I guess I'm going to end the video with just by saying to Martin's family, friends, former bandmates, uh, anybody that was in his life that knew him, my deepest condolences go out to you. The metal world lost a brilliant mind and, uh, it's an absolute shame. So, Martin, thank you for everything. Rest in peace. Um, that's all I got to say. Thanks for watching.